Hello so guys, it's Dave Baffle of video on the channel. Today we have the Newcastle United vs Sheffield United preview. It is a massive, massive game for both teams. Sheffield United down at the bottom, struggling for wins, struggling to get points and more than likely playing championship football next season. Newcastle had a really poor result on, on Wednesday night and have got to bounce back and of all the games in the season, getting bottom of the league at home, Newcastle United have got to win. But Sheffield United aren't done and dusted yet, they can still survive, it will be a tough ask, but stranger things have happened, so we've got to be up for the test, and if Newcastle aren't, it will be a horrible day, but if you could leave a like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it wouldn't mean nothing if you could do so, anyways lads, let's get in it now, and we'll start off by speaking about Sheffield United, right then, Sheffield United, and honestly, what a, such a disappointing season, I think everyone predicted them to go straight back down, and they are sitting nine points above the drop, so if um not ten points should I say. So if results go go their way and we beat them, they will be relegated, which is a shame for them, but I think their recruitment just wasn't good enough in in in, in the transfer windows. The only good signing I'd say they've probably made is Ben Brent and Diaz on loan from Villarreal and He's got five goals and one assist since, um, coming on loan since January, but it's been such a disappointing season. Obviously, I think Harman's probably the standout player who came from Coventry last year. Five assists, four goals, but looking at their team, it's been such a disappointing campaign for them. And knowing that they will be playing Championship football next season, more than likely, with the games of Nottingham Forest, Everton coming up, two teams that are down at the bottom, and then they've got Newcastle and Spurs both fighting for Europe, so... It's a massive, massive ask. But the reason why um, Sheffield United are right down there is because they haven't won enough games. And it's as simple as that. Since Newcastle got knocked out of the Champions League in on the 13th of December, which felt like ages ago, since then they've won one Premier League match. That's scary. That's really, really scary. And that was against Luton as well. So it wasn't even like a big boy or someone quite high in the league it was a team that's fighting down there with them but they've got they've had so many disappointing results even losing 4-1 to Burnley at home I think that's the the nail in the coffin for me I think if you get and beat the team that's just above you on the table at home 4-1 I think that does say a lot but it's just it's been such a disappointing campaign and obviously not even to mention what happened earlier on in the season when Newcastle played them 8-0 it's been it's been a shock of a season, but there's always that team that come into the Premier League who, who, who struggle a lot. And this year, Sheffield United they didn't get their first win in the Premier League um, in November, and even last time they were in the Prem, they got their first win against Newcastle in January. They've struggled to get wins, they've struggled to get points, and it's been really disappointing. Three wins out of thirty four. Could honestly go down on one of the worst teams in Premier League history. Conceded 92 goals in 34 games. That is... Sh you know what? I'm going to get the calculator up now and find the... That's averaging 2.7 goals a match. Conceding. It's it's really scary. It's really scary for Sheffield United. But if they came into the season with any hope of, of staying up, I think was a bit... Up Optimistic. Obviously, they didn't make enough enough signings, in my opinion. But they look to be down and and, and out more than likely. It's it's been a struggle. It's been a shocker for them. But never say never. We've seen stranger things happen. Who could who could imagine if they beat us, beat Nottingham Forest, beat Everton, and beat Tottenham? That's twelve points that will put them on twelve twenty eight. That's still. That means Forest have to lose all their games, which I think everyone can tell now that they are, are down and out. But the, no, don't get us wrong, they'll, they'll, they'll still come to St. James Park and give her a good fight. I don't want to mention the two just yet, because obviously I'll speak about them in the next bit. But it's been really disappointing. It should be really disappointed with this season. And it's, it, it really has been. Picking up draws against, against Chelsea and, and Bournemouth and Fulham, not bad results, but... They've not be beat the teams that are down there in the bottom of them, and that's the reason why they're um, in the position that they are. They, they got beat five 0 against Burnley in earlier on the season. It's it's been really disappointing. They should be ready to rebuild in the championship, but who knows? Sometimes when you get relegated from the Prem, 
and disjointed from your fans, the players, the whole club, and they could, they could struggle in the championship next season, but let's speak about Newcastle. So I'm recording this the day after. This video's going straight out on Thursday when recording this editing, I'm gonna upload it. I'm recording this the day after, so I haven't heard any of his press conference. I heard his comments after the Crystal Palace game, but as you see from me rant, if you just watched it, I wasn't the happiest of bunnies, you could say. It was really disappointing, really. It was a bit concerned how poor we were. First shot on target in the 86th minute was a bit, like, it, it, it's really scary. And knowing that we got player of the pot against Crystal Palace, we're lucky, so lucky we've got 20th and 19th in, in, in the table next. But what I am scared about, our form against the teams down the bottom have been abs absolutely shocking. Got beat at Palace away. We haven't played Brentford yet um, away, but we beat them at home. Everton home and home and away, we didn't beat them. We got beat at Forest at home. We couldn't beat Luton Town home and away. Burnley were well, not played away, but we beat them at home. And then obviously we beat Sheffield United. But the teams that are just above the relegation zone, from 18th to, to 14th, we've, we've, we've struggled. We have, apart from... Like, even Brentford at home was a struggle. But it's been a struggle down at the bottom. But then we've beat the likes of PSG, Man City, Man United... When the 90th minute against um, Liverpool, we've beat Arsenal, we've beat Tottenham, we've beat West Ham. We've beaten all these teams this season, but then struggled down the bottom. And obviously, I know our away form is so poor this season. Four wins and 16 is unacceptable for a team that should be fighting for Europe. And going into the game against Sheffield United, it's the perfect opportunity to play them where Eddie will be fuming. You could tell he was in his, um, after the game. He wasn't, he wasn't happy and... If them lads don't go up there on Saturday and graft the bollocks off against Sheffield United, it'll be so, so disappointing. But yet again, I feel like it's the same names are just getting mentioned every week. Um, Longstaff and Dubravka. It's every week. It's every week. It's it's getting concerning, it really is. And I think Eddie Howe got it wrong in the game itself. I think defensively, just because it worked against Spurs at home, who... Played to a system that worked how we played, going a bit more forward. Against a five at the back Palace side who play on the counter and got loads of pace going forward. You play a right winger and right back, a right back and centre half, and a, and a centre back and left back. You're only asking for one answer. And it's the most annoying thing is you've got these players on the bench, like Lewis Hall, like Livermento. I know Livermento was only there for an emergency, but not good enough. It, it's not good enough. Um, Defensively, I think from the from the from the players I play, don't get it wrong. Obviously, they're not shouldn't be playing, but it's scary when you think about it. Considering that back four, that played that back five, sorry, including the keeper, that played against Palace, all of them were here pretty take over apart from Dan Byrne, which is which is really scary considering the fact that Dan Byrne wasn't one of our more key signings in the in the takeover. That defence should not be playing for Newcastle concerning the takeover. It's coming up to three years in October this year. We need a big rebuild. We need to f fix a team and it's going to be an interesting one on, on Saturday. It's going to bounce back though if we can. We've got to bounce back and that's the key thing and the key factor to this game. Newcastle United have got to bounce back and pick up three points and, and try and go for, for seventh now, which, if that's what we want, uh, it's going to be a scare. It's, it's a funny old season. The title's still up for chances. Top four still on the court for, on the court for teams. Top seven is still all over the shop. The relegation spot, it's been a funny old season with only four games, le four games left of it. Newcastle have got five. Am I, am I wrong? Five games have got Sheffield United, Burnley. Brighton, Man United and Brentford. If I've got to give a prediction, Newcastle are going to bounce back. We should bounce back. It's going to be a 2 0 win for the tune. And that's going to be the end of the video, boys. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It would have been a lot if you could do so. Anyways, lads, I'll see you all for the prediction tomorrow and the vlog will be out on Saturday. Let's hope Newcastle United can pick up three points. How are we, the lads? Newcastle!